I'm Sam Lavoie. My real name is Joseph Maurice Gerald. I was born in the, the back 40 in Quebec, and as uh, I got baptized when my mom was asleep, that's how I got the, the typical French-Canadian handle. Uh, my mom wanted to call me Sam, so she did. So I, to all my friends, I've been known as Sam. And uh, I was an instrument, and midway through the career, I started realizing it wasn't really it. Uh, so I remustered to Weapons Tech Land, and uh, it's like an Army gunsmith. I worked as a the technical NCO and a ranger instructor, and that was interesting. Working up in the north with the people in the James Bay, Hudson Bay frontier, and you really see what uh, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, you're working with people who don't have a home hardware down the street. Uh, if you want anything, there's, everything's two weeks out. So if you wanted uh, a nail that the local store doesn't have, two week wait to get that nail into the community. So you see a lot of make do. A lot of improvisation, you know, making something else do something it wasn't intended to do, and you actually some uh, you see some real ingenuity. You see stuff that's really impressive. This is a, a Hudson Bay camp knife. I actually made this from an old farrier's rasp. Uh, it wasn't a rasp I used. I bought it at a scrapyard, 60 cents a pound. So, you know, I probably paid there's maybe 70 cents worth of uh, material in this. It's a high carbon steel. And I made a knife like the Hudson Bay Company used to sell native people, sort of, you know, the French fur trapping era. I find when I'm working with my hands, uh, I feel good. It does make you feel you're accomplishing something. Uh, my day job, I'm working at a desk sitting in front of a screen and you can administrate all day and you just don't really get that sense of accomplishment. When you sharpen something, when you build something, you feel good. It really works. But I'm not really, I, I don't consider myself an artsy type person. Everything I do is sort of practical, knives, tools. I really enjoy things like that, fixing things. Uh, to make something just to be nice or to be beautiful or to look at, not really my thing. And uh, I know working with your hands is a great, is very therapeutical for me, but uh, even in, in hospitals, so they call it occupational therapy. Uh, somebody with a bad ankle uh, working on a rehab lathe. I saw one once and it was explained to me that he had to use his foot as a treadle to run this lathe. So now he's building something, working his foot instead of just doing exercises with a, a physiotherapist. He's actually working his mind and he's working that bad ankle on the treadle. Um, look at children when they bring home artwork to mom and dad, those those really goofy pictures or the squirrel or the first little pottery things. You know, they're so proud of that and parents make a big fuss about it and save them and yeah my mom and dad saved some of those little things i made but they felt really good so if it made me feel good as a little kid to color something make something why wouldn't it make me feel good now as an adult and it's same thing it just the crayons are a little bit more exotic if you look around about society and uh, the consumerism i think it's a business i have no background in marketing or sales or or anything like that but I think it was industry, it pushed it. I think some of the first examples I can think of were razor blades. Men bought a, a straight razor or were presented a straight razor, you know, after puberty. Uh, you had a brush, soap, a leather strop and a stone and you could use that for your entire life. You could pass it on to your son. It took a bit of skill. You had to maintain this piece of equipment. It was a bit of an outlay. Uh, and I'm sure even at the time, you know, nowadays a real straight razor probably costs around $100 to get something that's that's a real razor, not something that looks like a razor. And they could industry could do it faster than we could. And it made it efficient. And with more people working, large families, it was nice and easy. And it was probably efficient. That's sort of a good side to that. But it also creates a dependence. And ain't not much different than drug use. If you look at axes, um, the, a blacksmith used to make it. He would take wrought iron, meaning a really a form of mild steel, and he would forge weld a, a carbon steel bit into it, and uh, he would produce an axe through the eye, grind it, shape it, heat treat it, and he would produce you an axe, usually a good axe. Industry will pump out an axe. It probably won't last a lifetime, but it's a fraction of the price, and if you lose it, it doesn't really hurt. Metalworking is sort of nifty because, you know, historically, Whoever had the best metal in the day ruled the world. And it was a big thing, you know? Imagine going into battle with a bronze sword and the guy across from you had an iron sword or a steel sword. Like, wow, he could, his edge would stay sharper, longer. His tool is more durable. He could, he could do more with the same tool because it was made out of something better. I like making knives, not to fight with. They're a tool, they're something that's used, but you can see we're making a good knife. Is, it's kind of nifty. And when you've made a knife, 
you know, taken a piece, an old file, hammered it, ground it, reheat treated it. You realize what industry goes through and um, a mistake, you know, you the first one you screw up, but you can bet in industry, research and development, you know, they probably screw up a lot of stuff learning. And uh, yeah, it gives you an appreciation for what industry does and why industry is the way it is today. Uh, once again, most of my skills are um, metal related. Woodworking is a discipline in itself. Can I carve? Yes. Can I put two by fours together and make something? Yeah, I can, but it's not my strong suit. So I tend to leave that to my son. He's a cabinet maker. That's what he does. He's really good at it too. He's got a real like for that and he's good. But I've got a lot of time to work down here too and it's really good. It's relaxing, it allows me to focus my attention on something other than work, than other than myself. And it's, uh, it's really therapeutic. The, the value of working with your hands, accomplishing something, making something cannot be bought. It has to be earned and that's something you do yourself. One of the fellows from up north came down to visit and it was a really interesting visit. Um, he brought me a big chunk of caribou meat and uh, oh, I thanked him for it. It was kind of nifty and stuff. But one of the things he explained to me later was uh, the, the idea of always bringing something so that if I didn't have enough, I could share back with them. And I thought, boy, that's kind of nifty. One of those simple things, simple lessons. And I think working with your hands, being an artisan, being self-sufficient, it teaches you, reminds you that regularly. Um, making biscuits like uh, we were having for lunch. You know, it took a few minutes in the morning. It was kind of fun. Uh, and we get a product that, yeah, we could buy. And could we buy better? Maybe, maybe not, but it was sure fun to build it. And your guest knows you did this just for him. But it really wasn't just for the guest. You know, I enjoy making them too. And I make them for my buddies at work and they think it's really neat. It's, it's awesome, you know. Uh, when you give something to someone that you've made, something that you've made with your hands, your time, your sweat, you're giving a piece of yourself to that person and they usually appreciate it, especially if they're artisans or if they're people that understand they have built something themselves. And that's why using your hands yourself, when someone does something like that for you, you appreciate it even more. You understand what happened. And we might be missing a bit of that in society today. Something I saw in the North, people that were incredibly independent, people that could live off the land, and they did for thousands of years, are now stuck in the consumer society much like we are. And we look at the third world now, people that have been exploited. You know, some of these people are incredible artisans, but the reality of the, the marketplace today is you can't go fast enough. People make knives, people uh, make woodworking and stuff, but just working with your hands really doesn't pay. But there's more to life than just making a buck. You know, the good feeling that you get from making something with your hands, the fact that it saved you from sitting on the couch, not a bad thing, not a bad thing at all.